Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You can Thank you so much. And maybe just to mention something. Yes. Being a hospital, we are also interested with drugs. Yes. Yes. And we need also people to tell others about the hospital. Because that's the most important thing. That we are not charging like any other hospital. These are faith based hospitals. Our costs are down there just to maintain the hospital. We need people to come, get the treatment, come and taste what we serve. Yes, thank you. I'm sure they've had. <laughs> thank you. Well, today has been an exciting and pleasant visit at Happy Life Children's Home. And on set with me, I have the administrator to the children's home who will shed more light and even share her experience on how it has been so far working with amazing young kids. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you very much. Hi. Kindly introduce yourself to us. My name is Sarah Kenyanjui. I'm the administrator of Happy Life Children's Home. Tell us more about yourself. Um... I am a mother of two and I am married and uh, it has been uh, my lifelong passion to work uh, in the community. I've always, this has always been my job. Before I came here I used to be a missionary working in Kakuma refugee camp and so this has always been my thing to give back to the community and so, so it's such a pleasure to be working with the children. Oh, so how did you come to find out about Happy Life? Um, the founders of um, Happy Life Children's Home, especially Reverend uh, Faith Ndongo, used to attend the church, uh, my childhood church, and so it's a person that I've known since I was younger, and actually somebody mentioned it to me that she started a children's home, and there was a vacancy, they were looking for a social worker, so actually I came here as a social worker, 2015, they were looking for a social worker, and that's how I, I landed here, I did the interview and they liked me. Oh, wow. Yes. So how has your experience been so far for the past three years? Wonderful, I would say. Wonderful. Working, uh, there's one thing about uh, touching a life. It's something that money can really not pay. It's something that has to come from the heart. Because at the end of the day when you have touched the life of a child, uh, every time we uh, rescue a child from a dump site, a pit latrine, from a forest, all manner of things, once you have touched that life, rescued that baby, seen the baby grow, 
and then adopted into a wonderful family, nothing beats that. No money can pay that. You know, it's just one of the best feelings in the world. And what I would say is that like, I have the best job in the world. Wow. Yes. So tell us about the process that um, you go through mm -hmm. when you hear news about the child. Oh. T just take us through the whole process and what ages mm -hmm. are exactly in this home. Mm -hmm. And even you can mention the numbers that you have so far. Okay. So what happens is um, Happy Life is a shelter for the abandoned children. And so what happens, we don't, we don't rescue orphans. Like we don't take in baby children that has relatives. We only take children that are um, abandoned completely with no one. So what happens if a good Samaritan or maybe a member of the public finds a, a child abandoned, usually they would call the police and then the police will call us. So what happens, we, we go to the police, get the child and then come with a first police letter. And then we, when we come here, we wait for three more months and then go for a second police letter. The three months uh, waiting period is to see whether there's somebody that's gonna come up uh, asking for the, whether maybe a relative looking for the child. If that doesn't happen, then we free the child up for adoption. Yes. So, and adoption is, how can you describe the process? Is it an easy one here in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Or is it a bit tougher? Mm -hmm. You can take us through the process and even highlight mm -hmm. some recommendations that you would give out there. Um, well, first of all, what I would say is that adoption is a beautiful thing because you get to uh, give a child who, who maybe wouldn't have had a good life, a better chance of living by taking them to your house. So I would say the process of adoption has become very easy in Kenya. And actually, to commend Kenyans, a lot of Kenyans are adopting, which is a wonderful thing. And so what happens is that um, once you come here, a lot of people usually would come here asking for, can I adopt, can I get a child? But we always take them back to the adoption agency because those are the people that you work with. What happens is that at the adoption agency, they will give you a form to fill, then they will take you through the process after they have uh, interviewed you and they have, after you have gone through with them, through the process and they see that you're fit for adoption, they will send you back to us to match you with a child. Yeah. Oh, so basically someone can easily adopt now. It is very easy to adopt. Actually, I always say it's easier to adopt than get your own child. Mm. Yes, it's easier <laughs> to adopt. Because, you know, uh, and, uh, and actually getting your own child is even more expensive. Because you have to carry this baby for nine months, keep on going for like medical checkups, finally go to a hospital, you know. But here we already have given, we are giving you a baby that's already born. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's easier to adopt. Wow. Yes. And tell us more about the home. When the child gets into the home, mm -hmm. what are the steps that you take? What exactly happens to that child and what, what which big which big part does happy life play mm -hmm. apart from just providing the shelter okay yeah. um first of all one of the things we give the children apart from shelter is safety safety we give them food and then we give them a warm bed to sleep in and so what happens when they come here the first thing we do is first take a picture of the child just with the the clothes they are wearing when they we rescued them and then we give them a bath of course because usually usually we rescue very small babies our home here is a home for infants so usually we rescue very like a day old a few hours old like a week old and so usually the babies will come very dirty so we first clean them and then take them to the hospital for a medical checkup to see if they have a uh, they need to be checked. And uh, now that when we didn't have a hospital, we used to have an isolation room where we would put the children for at least a week for the nurse to be seeing them there. But now, we, because we have our own hospital, what happens is that we take them to the hospital and they are observed by the doctor for uh, a few weeks. Then we, they join the others in the rooms. And then after that, usually because they come without a name, we name them and then Immediately, we take them to court for committo. Committo is uh, taking the children before a judge so that the judge can know that th that child has been brought to happy life. 
Yes. And then he, uh, the judge gives us a document to come home with. So they commit the children uh, here for three years. And if the child is not adopted in those three years, we go back to court for recommittal okay. and commit the child again for three years. Yeah. So um, I've noticed there's a routine mm -hmm. that is in happy life. Yeah. So tell us more about it. Tell us more about how you manage to manage their routines and their attention at the same time. Mm -hmm. what, what structures have been put in place in order to be able to reach to reach out to all these babies at the same time. Mm -hmm. When you're working with babies below three years, like sometimes you have like 55 babies, all of them below four years, I would say. When you're working with such kind of an age, you have to get into a routine. So they wake up, um, by seven they are all, they are all up, or mostly, yeah, they are all up, they take uh, breakfast, they take a bath, the kids, uh, they go outside to have the sun. The infants have um, somewhere you will see when you go there where they go and have some sun. Uh, then the toddlers can, we take them out there to just go explore and play outside. Then after that, usually the infants would be asleep uh, from 10 to 12.30. But the toddlers usually don't sleep, they just play around. Then 12.30 and the dot. And here it has to be 12.30 or it will be chaos. Everybody is eating. And then 1.30, everybody is sleeping, up to 3.30, mostly 4. Then they wake up and the routine starts again. The changing, the feeding, the washing, yeah. Oh, so that, mm. that, that means that you do have staff? Well, yeah, we have a lot of workers. With, uh, we, have, we have like a big team of uh, women. Usually it's a women, wonderful women working with those babies. And then we have a day shift and a night shift. We have people working during the day and we have people working at night. So mm. what, what do you look for when you are, because necessarily this is not a job vacancy that you can place out there. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you look at when someone comes in and says, I just want to work with these children? Mm -hmm. What do you look for? Yeah. I, I've, as I had said in the, uh, in the beginning that um, here, money cannot be your motivation. It has come. It has to come from deep within, because here we are talking about uh, dealing with a life here. And so, usually, what we look out at is like um, the passion in that child. And usually, uh, a person that has worked with children uh, before that is an added advantage. But it's usually a learning uh, process because somebody might tell you they have a passion, but down the line you discover they don't have. So we do it prayerfully and look for that person, a person that is willing to work uh, beyond their limit. Because here, if I tell you that we work uh, 8 to 5, I will be lying. Because usually that's the official hours, and we tell everybody here we, we are open 8 to 5. But sometimes we work beyond that because I have been called by at 6 when I was leaving. The police have called me. They are telling me there are two babies that have been found there that I should go for the babies. You know, I wouldn't say no. I'm past my working hours, no, I need to go home, no, here, yeah, it doesn't work like that. So it has to come from the heart. So tell us more about the, the life after happy life. Because mm -hmm. here is a child yeah. rescued, mm -hmm. has attained three years, mm -hmm. and now the, there needs to be room for the next zero to six month baby. Yeah. So what, tell us more about that transition and what structures you put in place to ensure that they're not back mm -hmm. where they came from. Okay. Uh, we, because we work with abandoned children, most of our, uh, actually we have never had a child that left because you see these are children that have, have no one. This is not like a child that knows where they have come from. This is a child that is completely has no one. So our children are in here and we are the ones that are taking care of them. So what happens, our um, exit plan, our major one is adoption. And then we have foster care and then we have integration. Uh, so adoption uh, is the way you give them up to other families to raise, and also foster care, you can give them temporarily to other homes, to like to families that are willing to stay with that child for some time. And then reintegration is that some of these children, we discover later that they, uh, there's somebody like a relative that was found who is, would be willing to stay with the child, we also do that. 
reintegrate them back to the community. But then from this institution, we also have another home at Juja uh, for older kids, uh, 4 to 17 years. And so when they attain the age of going to school and they're not adopted, we take them to Juja for school. Yeah, We have not really gotten to, uh, to, to high school. Our school in Juja is up to class 8. This, this will be our first class 8. And so from there, it's, it's each day at a time. Mm -hmm. Next year, we will know what to do. We, I don't know if my director told you that we are, we have, we are starting to build a high school for, for them. So it's each day at a time. Yeah. Well, I know you've handled so many cases, mm -hmm. but can you share with us one or two memorable cases that forever till today are imprinted in your heart? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I don't even know what to tell you because mm -hmm. most of them, I have done a lot of rescues. Have a lot of like, um, I think they in their hand so many since I came here. So, but uh, one of them stands for me. There's this baby that I was called to rescue, and um, we thought it was a hospital somewhere. I wouldn't, I will not mention the clinic was closed, but I, I don't want to. <laughs> so, uh, somebody called me, I don't know where they got my number from. They called me and they told me, oh, there's a baby that has just been delivered. Why don't you come for it? And the mother doesn't want it. And you see, this is a mother that had not even filled any legal papers. Because usually if you want to give up your child for adoption, there's a legal process that you go through. You have to go through an adoption agency. They give you uh, papers to fill, like some paperwork. And then you, you say that um, I do not want to keep my child, that after the child has been born, I want to give up my child to happy life for adoption. Uh, this mother had not done that and it was an emergency and the doctor kept on calling me, no, 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 you need to come here because the mother wants to give up. So I called the police and we, the police escorted me to the clinic only to discover that it was one of these quack, black, you know, abortion clinics and the baby was born and he was preterm. He was seven months and I remember the look of that baby and ah, uh, the baby looked um, out like a small thing and he was gray in color and I didn't actually think, I, I told the police, no, 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 I'm not going home with this baby because I don't think this baby will survive. You should see the child today. Eventually we came with him. He's now almost two years old, the cutest baby ever. So some of these stories, they just warm your heart when you think about them. A life that you thought had no hope and finally because God was in the story, wonderful babies. Another one that I remember of is a baby that we rescued um, seven months ago. The baby was three months old, but this baby actually had a mother. But the mother was a drunkard and she would leave the baby in the house for days without feeding the baby. And later, uh, the neighbors discovered that she has been leaving the baby there. So when we went to rescue, when the police called me and we went to rescue the baby, he was all sticks. Like, I've never seen that. Like, I wouldn't even describe you to you how that baby looked. He was three months and he was only skin and bones. And I was so sure that baby would not survive a night. Six months down the line, you should see the baby. Chubby, very friendly baby. So... Some of those stories just they keep you you have to keep on going when you you see such things yes oh so i, I just want you to look into that camera mm -hmm. and speak one word of hope mm -hmm. to anyone who's listening out there mm -hmm. could be a mother who's wondering where the next meal of her baby is mm -hmm. or could be someone who's really on the verge of giving up mm -hmm. and also it could be one who would love to adopt yeah and it could be one who would also love to chip in. Mm -hmm. So you could just summarize it in a nutshell mm -hmm. and just speak to someone. Yeah. So what I would love to say is that there are so many people out there that really are looking for jobs, are waiting maybe to go to join college. Come to Happy Life. Come volunteer. We need as much help as we can. Because with uh, more than 50 babies, all of them young, we need as much help as we can. So you can call me, my number will be scrolling on the screen. You can call me, you can come help. And if there's somebody out there that wants to adopt a baby, you either want to, you already have your own children and you want to adopt, 
uh, uh, help a baby or you don't have a baby and you want to adopt one, you can also call me and we can, we can talk about it. And anybody that uh, would want to support our work, uh, it's great work, uh, you can go to our website, we, you can go and check our giving channels, or you can also go to our pay bill, which is 8809060, and God will bless you. Yes. So you've had it from Sarah's heart to yours. From serving refugees in Kakuma to inspiring young lives, young babies, and giving them hope, home, and even love. No words can describe that. Stay tuned. So I thought that uh, I could come here and uh, get to see the less fortunate children and uh, get to see organizations that can also come here and help them. Wow. Yeah. So um, what advice would you give someone who's practically seated at home and <laughs> watching um, movies on Netflix from 6 to 6? What, what kind of advice would you offer them? Or what, what would you like to just tell them after? Uh, what you can tell them is that uh, rather than just sitting at home, it's also good to come, to come around and uh, help not only here but also other places because these are uh, they are our favorite humans and uh, they need some lunch maybe to like a planet or something. So coming here, even if they call you uncle, auntie, that's more than just sitting out to them. It makes them happy and uh, at least they get to know that there are people somewhere who think of them each and every day. Um, so it would be really nice for others to go and share out. So um, if it were not for community service yeah. at school, yeah. would you still be here? Yeah, I would still be here mm -hmm. because um, I personally place work with my friends and uh, we, we are still contributing. So one of them is one who came up with the idea to come here. So I told them actually I do community service there and it will be easier. So one of these fine strategies we once we gather up enough cash we can bring in some donations for them uh, to be able to support that. So what uh, what would you tell someone maybe would love to be part of Happy Life directly, indirectly, in which way they can play a part in this amazing kids' life? Then they can play a part in any way that they can, in terms of uh, donations, in terms of monetary, uh, buying things like let's say dental, soup, clothes, donations, uh, coming here and helping, helping even if it's just an hour a day, it, it really helps in everything. And within time, the one hour goes to two hours, goes to three hours, and you create a special bond with the kids. Like, um, let's say for me, 
if I know that I have a Saturday and I'm this so free, I can come here even if it's not being recorded because I know it's, it's a duty that I created in my own self to come and help with you. So. Yeah. Um, thank you for your time. Um, and I, I hope this will impact a lot in your lives and also in the lives of this adult. So, Tasha, you're my singers today. Say my hello. Say hello. 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 <laughs> so that's it here from lunchtime at Happy Life. I think after lunch is when we'll be taking a nap. So, Papa Nikazi to Kukula. So, stay tuned until next time. Thank you. But on the lunch time at Happy Life, na limejunga pamoja na mama, madari, uko Happy Life. Tafadhali tutambulishe kwa wanao tu angalia, wanao tutazama na utuambie how about yourself. Kupatina na ito wana mudamu. Na nini ke ya kupa wa Happy Life. Kaka <laughs>
Um, you have had it for yourself. <laughs> that age is not a factor. And also love can never be limited just to one person. There's a lot of love to share. Na kwa hivyo hata kama ni kujitolea wakati wako pia nikifuata kujitolea unaweza kujitolea hata wakati wako kuja tu kuhudumia watoto na utawacha an incredible mark in their lives so when there is vision there is god's provision and today's story of hope is a story of one man who was once an army officer but then is now a lay leader running a home a children's home a primary school and a children's hospital a story that is based on faith hope and love that is all we are here about so join me next time i've been your host terry moriyuki on another exciting episode of stories of hope right here at focus tv same place same time different venue it just might be you talk to us at Stories of hope at gmail.com. Write down your comments on our Facebook page and also our Twitter handle and our IG handle. So stay tuned until next time. Thank you.